Welcome to week eight, accounting for purchases and cash payments, which is very similar to what we reviewed last week with um, our sales journals. Here are your lecture notes that go over the general journal information. There are special journals, but we are not going to, you are not required to submit anything with that. Susan Cronin videos are there to help you understand the concepts. And we're going to review problem 11-11A and 11-12A, which you'll find on page 427. But before you do anything, I ask of you all to take the student opinion survey, which you'll find on Campus Cruiser under student services. Now I'd like to start reviewing the problem 11-11A. And again, you will find this on page 427. So you'll see that we have we write checks out. And now for the rent expense, we can write the check number. It's still going to be the rent expense account number and cash account number and the total amount. Purchases will have our debit and it's still our expense account. And we will have the accounts payable as we have in the past. But now we will also have Tang Toys because that's who we now owe. So that's our sub journal. Like, just like we did for sales, we need to know how much do we owe Tang Toys. And we will write our invoice number. And you will see on July 3rd, purchase merchandise on account from Silas and company invoice number 812 for $3,100 and our terms are 110 net third and 30 which means that we will receive a 1% discount if we pay it within 10 days and the total amount is due if we pay it at the end of the month so right now that is how much they're charging us 2700 but what we pay in the end will make a difference. So we will continue this all the way through for all of our accounts, purchases, accounts payable, and Daisy Dolls, Tang Toys. So now here you'll notice that we're paying Tang Toys back. We, we owe them a lot more. So here we have accounts payable, Tang Toys, and we're paying them 2,200. And that's we pay in cash. But we took advantage of a discount. So we have a purchases discount. And we want to know how often do we take care of these discounts and do we take advantage of them? Do we have the money to do it? So we're going to put it into the 501 spot 2 account. For Scylla's company, we did the same thing. We owed them $3,100. So now we've wiped that off of our books. We've paid only $3,669 in cash, and we took advantage of a purchase discount of $31, which will go into our discounts. Now for Daisy Dolls, we returned the merchandise, so we did not pay for it. So we still have to take the $400 off of our, our accounts payable books and the amount that we owe Daisy Dolls. And now we put it into our purchases, returns, and allowances because we did not use cash. We just returned the entire item and we write down returned merchandise. So you'll see as we go through this that we've, we're either taking advantage of a discount. Here it looks like we took advantage of no discount. Maybe there was no discount available or we're doing a return and allowance. After we journalize all this information, just like we've done in the past, we need to now update our general ledger for all our activity in July. We refer back to the page number, and remember, we're paying back everything, so they're kept, the cash is a credit. We're reducing our cash because we're paying out. And you will see every time we reduce our cash, we also reduce our payable. And every time we charge something, we're crediting. And we, at the end of the month, we do have a credit balance.
we have our purchases. We like keeping track of what we've purchased. We have a purchase account. We have our purchases, returns, and allowance account. And our purchases discount ledger. And each one we're just transcribing straight from the general journal, page 16 and 17, right to our general ledger account. And we're making sure that it's all going into the right account. Rent expense we paid. Now this is what's new. We have an accounts payable ledger. We still put, put the post reference number as J17, but now we're very specific in who we are purchasing from. We want to know who do we always purchase from? Maybe they should give us a better discount. Maybe we can negotiate with them. Maybe we should stop ordering from them because we have too many returns. We keep track of everything as accountants. And now we're keeping track of how much, how much do we owe? Now from this journal I can, ledger, I can see that we still owe allied business, but we are completely paid off with Daisy Dolls. And I can tell you how much I owe to Tang's Toys. So now let's proceed with our schedule of accounts payable. Because one of the things that we want to know is what we like to have is a neat schedule saying which companies do we still owe money to and how much. And our proof is what is our balance in accounts payable. So if you look, we have three companies that we still owe money. 1980, 1980. 3460, 3460, Fasila's company, and Allied, 2450, and 2450. So again, we're just referring back to our ledger and putting them all down. But how do we know we've included everything that we should have? We look at the balance of our accounts payable on July 31st, and we think it should be 7890 So if we scroll all the way back up, to our general ledger and go to our accounts payable. Oops, we're in our journal. Journal. Here's our ledger account. Here's our accounts payable account, our 202 account, 7890 And that is exactly what we thought we should have, which means we're in proof. Oh. Use this video to help you when you're reviewing for your comprehensive problem because you need to do this for your comprehensive problem too. I hope all goes well and please reach out to me if you have any problems. Have a good day.